I heard you. I heard you. What's up, <laughs> my people? How y'all doing? Thank you, man. Back. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, y'all. Y'all know by now this is your man, CJ Jones, or Mr. TNTBS. And this is Elephant Exposed. I got my co host with me, Mr. Dwayne Stimson. How are you doing this evening, sir? Oh, great, man. Great. Good. good. Great, great. Great to be here, my brother. Yes, sir. Always. And thank you for being with me. Uh, and you, you want to just kind of like uh, tell the people about uh, what we're about to dive into as I pull it up for the people. Yes, I ran across this video today. And um, what you're going to see is um, <clears throat> a perfect example of some of the things we talk about on this show a lot. And uh, but it's got a, a different twist to it at the end, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it, it'll, it'll, it'll make you mad, but it'll, it'll show you a little bit of encouragement that maybe things might be, you know, making a little turn for the better, but you know, uh, I was pleased to see how it turned out, but uh, it also shows how, well, we'll, 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 we'll get into the video and we'll discuss it as we go along. <laughs> Absolutely. So without further ado, here we go. There we go. And here we go. Hey, let me see your hands. Bert, get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground right here. Who Get on the ground. You, Bert, you shark, get on the ground. Over here. On the ground. In South Carolina, that man in the white shirt and his disabled cousin behind him in red have every right to be terrified. On the ground! The Orangeburg police officer... Get on the ground! ...is on a power trip. Do, do you not listen? Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! There's a gun behind me! Why did you stop my head for, said the victim Clarence Gilliard. Indeed, Officer Dukes did just stomp on him. A gun, I believe, behind me. I ain't got no gun, nothing. Put your hands behind your back. Is there a gun back there? Ain't no gun. By that truck. Ain't no gun. You're not listening, dude. In this July 2021 incident with Officer David Lance Dukes, Orangeburg Police had received a call about a man knocking loudly on a door carrying a gun. Bro, you got a gun on you, man? No, I ain't got no gun. Right, I don't want no gun. Oh. Turn back over. Paul, do you watch him say? He had something. I ain't got no gun. The door's unlocked. No, he was right here. Watch him. Go watch him. There it is. All right, that's what he had. But that's not a gun. It looks like a makeshift tire changing tool. Mm. All right, who's the complainant? All right, get, up, get, get him up. Put the leg up. 25 cents, got one time. Put the leg that way so you can I'm stand up. You. All right, listen, I'm about to help you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, ready? One, two, three. All right. Yep, listen. yep, they slammed my head listen. down on the cement. Yep. Go back inside. Go back in the house. Go back in the yep. house. Ain't nobody yep. talking to you. I got head drum. Go back in the house. Yeah. Y'all bust my head down. Yeah. I've been in an accident. Yeah. Y'all bust my head down. You threw me down. I sure did. And you wasn't listening. Yeah. No, it ain't. You ain't just threw me down like that. I'm disability. Okay. I got. As Mr. Gilliard talks about his injury, watches the black officer on the right, Sergeant yep. Polidor mentions to another officer that they should step away and chat. Yep, you bust my head down on the cement. Yep, you bust my head. Alright, let me tell you what. That's forehead. You bust my head down on the cement. He was, he was in front of the car when I came up, and he was walking like this. 
And I, I thought it was a gun at first. I said, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun. Had him at gunpoint. And he's over here doing something like this. What he was doing is putting this up behind the tire. So he comes over right here. He got his hands in his pockets. I'm telling him, let me see your hands, let me see your hands, let me see your hands. He wasn't listening. He got the, like this right here, and we went on to the ground. That's what happened. Officer Dukes just told the officers he believed Gilliard had a gun and repeatedly told him to drop it. Dukes also alleged that when Mr. Gilliard stepped in front of the vehicle, he had his hands in his pockets and repeatedly ignored requests to show his hands. However, the body camera footage shows Mr. Gilliard had his hands above his head. And while Officer Dukes repeatedly asked him to get on the ground, he never asked Gilliard to drop a gun or show his hands, probably because Mr. Gilliard's hands were visible throughout the entire encounter. Fuck my hey, head. your head did hit the cement. Damn right, could you bust me down on the cement? Where's the complainant? You bust my head down on the cement. Right here? No, You bust my head. You bust my head. Where's the complaint? I'm trying to get the name of the complaint. So. You brought my head. You brought my head down on the cement. Moments later, after going through the items in Mr. Gilliard's pockets, Officer Dukes hears from another cop that nobody wants to press any charges. Hmm. There ain't nothing here want to press charges. On. Who called? I'm not sure. Um, Take him out of cuffs right now. I mean, because that's what we got. You have to use your force. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Dude, I didn't know what his intention was. That was a pinky high five of sorts while the white officer told Dukes to look at the body camera. You need to look at the camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The officer did wrong. Slam my head down. Bust my forehead. Damn right. Mayor, I'm going to take that into evidence of what he had. What? Well, I mean, his, you know, that's, that's the reasons I did what I did. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm coming from. Because when he was behind the truck, I couldn't see what he was doing. And I didn't know where that, ain't nothing there. Where that went. No if it was still in his pockets when he came around that car, car with his hands in his pockets. But again, the issue was Officer Duke's use of force when Mr. Gilliard was already on his hands and knees surrendering. Get on the ground! As other officers noted in their reports, Officer Dukes stomped the man's head into the pavement. No, 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 camera. Yeah, okay. a dope All right, stick. that's fine. A dope stick. So he can come out of cuffs? Yes. The police took Mr. Gilliard out of handcuffs. Yeah, he can come out. Then one officer photographed the injury to the man's forehead. <laughs> that woman officer handed back Officer Dukes his cuffs. An EMT then stepped forward. As Mr. Gilliard described what happened, his cousin in the white t-shirt approached Officer Dukes. Dukes, can I get a car for me? I don't have one now. We don't okay. have one. They, they, they don't give us cars. Okay, what's your badge number? 1059. They don't give us cards. And that was a lie, as Sergeant Polidor points out. Let me see if I can get my phone. Hold on. Hold on. We, we, we have cards. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Brandon, he can get his stuff off the car. Sergeant Polidor gives the man Officer Duke's full name and badge number. Please say badge number. 1059. Just two days later, the Orangeburg, South Carolina Police Department fired Officer David Lance Dukes. Two weeks after that, following interviews with other police and witnesses, prosecutors announced they were charging David Dukes with assault. 
A few days after that, local news reporters obtained documents showing the former Orangeburg DPS officer charged for the use of force incident was previously fired from the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office. The personnel documents said Dukes had created a hostile work environment and that his attitude was destructive. In other words, even before David Lance Dukes became a police officer in Orangeburg, South Carolina, it was clear that he was trouble. Nonetheless, kudos to the Orangeburg Police Department for acting so quickly after Mr. Dukes assaulted Clarence Gilliard. Kudos also to Sergeant Polidor and other officers who were willing to tell the truth about this incident and provided Mr. Gilliard's family the information they needed to follow up. One can only imagine the role that Sergeant Polidor's incident report played in causing her city to fire and charge David Dukes. Mm. Officers who witness police misconduct are often placed in a position where their honest reporting about a colleague jeopardizes their own career. Indeed, it is not unusual to see law enforcement justify the violent actions of their peers. But Sergeant Polidor showed courage and integrity and helped to hold Mr. Dukes accountable. Recently, the city of Orangeburg settled with Mr. Duke's victim, Clarence Gilliard. The city paid him $650,000 to avoid a potential lawsuit. The money is coming from the city's insurance carrier. Mm. Let me be clear. Mm. When police respond to reports about somebody with a gun, it's understandable if law enforcement officers are nervous. But when a human being, regardless of their race or gender, has their hands up and goes on their knees to surrender to police, kicking that person is despicable. And... It's a crime. Well, David Schuster. first of all, before we even get started with our reactions, kudos, shout out, and all credit goes to TYT Network, uh, Young Turks Network. Excellent job. David um, Schuster, he always kills it. Like, this man is fat tight. So before he even go on the show, him, uh, Dr. Richard, I mean, the whole crew, really. I mean, everybody just have they stuff uh, back to back. So they, so whatever they show, I know is credible. So we're just re reacting to what they did um, as far as the um, fact checking and different things like that. So first of all, we got to give them credit for even just having this story to share and to show <laughs> um, what real life is. Um, I know you want to dive into it. Let's go for it, baby. What you got? Woo! Um, I, I, I want to concede to you, my brother. Oh. <laughs> well. okay. when you, 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 do, you do a point, then I do a point. It's, okay. it's several things to take from you. All right. Well, from a non-active police officer point of view, please understand that just because you've worked for a different um, entity, than I, that means that <clears throat> um, most of most of my experience is pulled from being a military police officer, but I also have done work with civilian um, departments as well as well as uh, Mecklenburg uh, County Sheriffs because they were the one that actually certified me. Okay, so with that being said, um, you are right. It is so much stuff to unpack. There was a few things that I politely and professionally disagree with the observation. And that's just simply because um, I actually lived the life um, and I've actually seen things like this in action. Mm -hmm. um, where this, uh, I believe the former cop's name is uh, David Dukes. Um, he should have known right from the start that his story needed to have matched <laughs> what the camera exposed. Okay. So that was mm -hmm. number one. And then it kind of leads into the thing that I did see right off the bat. And that was the, uh, David Schuster had brought up the, the, uh, the pinky high five, not necessarily uh, true in, in, from that perspective, Let's look at it from a different angle. I know that we are being recorded. You know that we're being recorded. So without mm -hmm. me telling you, hey, Dwayne, you don't care the camera. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. I'm kind of tapping you on the chest. Right. And right. I'm telling you, you know, use of force is going to have to be written up. Regardless as to what happened, regardless to where 
if the charges was uh was going to be charged or not, there's still going to have to be a use of force because you know what you did. That's mm-hmm. what that that whole little camera tap meant uh was. It wasn't necessarily like, hey, we got this in the bag. Nah, not 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 necessary. Yeah, yeah um, I didn't see it like that either. Um, and then, but I did see the whole like old fashioned uh kind of like slave meat uh slave enforcer mentality of get back in the house no no that would you, no sir that would have never worked in 2022 um mm-hmm. i mean even when if i was coming through <laughs> um wrong black man mm-hmm. you know we would have had a situation right there you know and then that would have got straightened out later and I would have beat him in civil court and everything because mm-hmm. we have a right to stand there. And as long as you're not impeding in the investigations and stuff like that, um, mm-hmm. uh, the, the city would have kicked out two checks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to take this thing light, bro, because like it, it was serious, but it was comical in the sense. And then you had a third person, like even the person that was walking away from the scene Again, had I been the on-scene officer, him being David Dukes, everybody would have stopped where they were because that's a potential witness, potential witness. Okay, mm-hmm. Stop right there. I don't need for you to go nowhere. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Okay, fine. Still stay right here. Everybody stay right where you are. Don't move. Okay. Then the whole flat out lie, the flat out lie, you know, I, he had his hands in his pockets. I'm going to get those things are stereotypical if there were not things called witnesses. And mm-hmm. if there wasn't, you got the biz- biggest witness with you, and that's called your camera. So in essence, he was fired by his own submission of the recording from his own uh, camera. Body cam, yeah. Yeah, bo- body camera. And then... I did he realize or did he not realize that the car is recording and whoever is coming to aid him is recording and it didn't happen. Yeah, to I, think, I, think that, yeah, I think when that yeah, I think when that happens, people I think people's um just nature kicks in and you just lie. Just um, you know, because <laughs> just lie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, because because you can't, even though it's being recorded. I think he was caught in a rock and a hard place. He he was like when the dude was saying he he, he kept saying he he punched my head down. He stomped my head down. He didn't have to do that. Of course he's not gonna sit there and admit it. So yeah, he lying, you know. And, and I think he was probably in the back of his mind thinking, man, man, this this, this is gonna come out or whatever. But at the at the time, and did you did you see that he kept he. He he had no remorse. He kept. He said, "Yeah, yeah, I stumped your head down because you wouldn't listen." He, I mean, did you hear that? He well, said no, he, that. Well, times. he said, "I believe he said that." Yeah, I put you down. But either way, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, because the fact that he was putting his his person of interest down was not the, mm-hmm. was not the case. Um, he wasn't fighting that fact because the man mm-hmm. did go down, but it was mm-hmm. the manner in which the man went down. You see what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. he didn't deny that the man went down and that the man wasn't complying to his his orders, okay? But what he left out was the the level of force, Mm -hmm. you know? And once people go down, okay, and they are no longer armed and everything, then that's when you yourself, as the police officer, right. your escalation of force m- matches the situation, okay? And I'm very glad that when the sergeant came on board, did you happen to catch the look? No, that was the part that almost made me laugh. The Because she had that look like every older woman that I've ever known, every older black woman (laughs) I ever known, she had like this look on her face like, now, you know what? We we in front of company, but wait till I get you. 
Are you talking about when he was? Are you talking about when he was saying we don't have um we don't have uh cars? It was in that moment <laughs> that I saw. That. She said, "Wait." She might as well say, "Baby, you know how old people call you, baby." She uh-huh. must have said, "Wait a minute, baby. We do get cars, baby." Uh, you just yeah, baby. yeah. And then you, you saw just wait. you saw that you saw that the, the paramedic gave her car. Mm-hmm. Uh, the sergeant gave her car. Right. And it was almost like everybody had flipped on him at that moment because you could well, tell. Well, no, it wasn't a flip. It, it it wasn't a flip. And think about it. And think about it like this. And I'm trying to get this in before we get cut off. Um, that was a couple things. This guy had already been fired. You don't think that those all uh, that those uh senior officers knew that? Maybe not the more uh lower ranking ones, because if you notice, he was the only one that didn't have rank either. But that's neither here nor there. But everybody had some sort of rank, so that means they've been doing this a while. Mm-hmm. He's the new guy coming in, mm-hmm. he fired from Calhoun County Sheriff's Department. Why? Because he was troubled there. But see, this is the thing. This is the part that we have to stop in our justice system. We have to stop allowing these cops to uh, get in trouble with use of force in one area, let them retire. And then when they retire, they just go apply in the next county, the next city, the next state over. And it's like, as if it's, nothing has ever happened because you're not, you're not killing the problem at the at the root, at the source. Only mm-hmm. thing you're doing is giving that problem to somebody else, mm-hmm. and that's and that's a part of um, the uh, reforming mm-hmm. and the recreation of law enforcement. You're gonna get rid of somebody, get rid of them, and make them unhirable across the board. Mm-hmm. So, yep, you're right. You, I mean, it almost reminds me of how gun laws need to be reformed a little bit, as far as like mm-hmm. when somebody has when somebody has a serious mental illness or serious suicidal thoughts, or maybe they was in school and they wrote a paper about killing people. That mm-hmm. should be a red flag. That person shouldn't have no business. Right. But, you know, maybe in the future if they can go through some therapy or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, that needs to be a, a strike against them or at least something for when they go look for a gun, just a little red alert comes up, you know. Same difference. If you did that in another county, like you said, you not you shouldn't be able to retire or get fired and then just get a job somewhere else. You're still carrying the same baggage. Right. You are. And so let me speak on that yeah. real quick. I just want to be on record by saying this. Um, we all have the right to uh, bear arms, but is, but let's be more specific, okay? Not everybody qualifies. That's just like mm-hmm. your driver's license. That's just like the age of uh, of the consumption of alcohol and um, tobacco products and everything else. We have limits to everything, even our right of of speech and different things like that. We only want to start splitting hairs when it comes to those things and try to put out scare tactics and all this other stuff when it's something that we aren't bothered with. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, I definitely agree. And as being a practitioner and as a responsible gun owner, I definitely uh, agree with uh, hard, harsher uh, punishments for those people that violate any uh, firearm law in the uh-huh. sense of, you know, using them in like massacres and stuff like that. Um, and uh, we do need to raise the age limit because just like in the military, um, at one point in time, um, you can just come right off the street and at the age of 18, you can, you can, uh, you could be a military police officer until they start realizing, hey, you hadn't even experienced life. Mm. So how can you come out here and start enforcing law? You can't. It did. It mathematically didn't make any sense. Plus, you don't mm-hmm. know how uh, the military is ran. You know, mm-hmm. you, you're fresh. You're green. So it takes a while for you to get, you know, used to different things. 
So uh-huh. then they raise they raise the bar, you know. Uh-huh. And we have uh, psych evals, and we constantly have training and uh, refreshment training. They, they call it sustainment training, different things like that. And in civilian world, it should be no different. And in, right. in, in every now and then, you still have to go back, and you still have to requalify almost the same way that you was initially qualified from the start. That's how you keep uh things on the up and up and mm-hmm. that's how you stay transparent but um yeah i mean i was talking, yeah. I was talking about it with somebody at work today and mm-hmm. it's a shame that anything else you have to get a license you have to take classes or you have to pass a test or mm-hmm. if it was a driver's license if it, if you wanted to become a chef if you wanted to uh if you wanted to own a certain type of animal if you want anything anything worthwhile that's mm-hmm. out of the ordinary. You have to you have to take a take a test for a study or prove yourself accountable. Just the only thing where you can turn 18 and just go in there and be like, let me get that gun, that gun, that ammo, and that ammo. You know what I'm saying? Like right. this is we're talking about something that can be possibly deadly. And I understand right. that guns do not kill people by themselves. They don't float around and kill people. Right. But the person that's purchasing the gun. Like you said, I've never seen such a a free willy uh, really type of system. Yeah, it's yeah. like a laissez faire type of. You know, it's like what is it going to take? You know, mm-hmm. if kids get if kids getting killed doesn't do it, and I don't know how we got on this subject, but it does relate. You know what I'm saying? But um, you know, it, it is important, but you know, it's different from what we were looking at in the video. But here we are. But um. But did you see in the video where mm-hmm. uh where uh the dude said I want to put this in the evidence? And then the dude was like, for what? For what? <laughs> because, because it wasn't a part of anything. That, again, that it was yeah. it was some funny parts in there. And uh basically he m- my man was just looking for sympathy. <laughs> and so they wrapping us up right now, my brother. Um, um we can go back and uh <laughs> do a, uh pick this second part up um at another time man we appreciate you guys hanging out with us and again uh thank you for another really good show i like to thank my co-host i like to thank uh tyt uh for doing such an outstanding job with a uh a story and just letting us as uh viewers just see what it's really like um other than that y'all we'll catch y'all on the other side y'all have a good one Peace.